Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Guys, it's your sister Naima B. Robert here. Again, with another reminder for you. And today, inshallah, I'm going to be speaking about 10 ways in which we can reduce the Muslim divorce rate, inshallah. Uh, this, these 10 ways are based on uh, research that I've done with imams and scholars and practitioners within the marriage field, whether they're counselors or therapists or long married folk. So inshallah, they'll be beneficial to you and to everybody else who watches this video. Before we get into it, I need you to do your sister a favor and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 30,000 subscribers by the end of the month and I need your help to get me there inshallah. So subscribe to the channel, like the video and make sure you share it with anybody out there who could benefit inshallah. So without further ado, let's get into these 10 ways. First, first most important way is to manage your expectations. Many of us go into marriage with very unrealistic expectations of our spouse, of the relationship itself, and just in general of married life, okay? In our society, we are given so much information about what a relationship should look like. And whether it's Hollywood, Bollywood, songs, you know, uh, stuff on social media, we are literally bombarded with the image of the ideal relationship, right? So it's understandable that most of us expect that when we get married, we find the one, he's gonna be our soulmate, and we're gonna have this amazingly romantic, passionate, um, fulfilling relationship right um we are hoping that he is going to make us whole that you know you know all of a sudden we're going to feel seen and appreciated and, and desired and wanted and all the things that we expect from our spouse and actually this reminds me of um you know something that esther perel talks about which is how our expectations of our, she calls them romantic relationships have changed over the decades uh, when you compare the way we expect our marriages or our relationships to fulfill us completely different to let's say two generations ago and then dating all the way back um, back in the day folks had really realistic expectations of what life was about not just marriage but life you know you were here you do your duty you work hard you're here for the big picture you're here for the family you know you take responsibility you know life is I don't want to say life is a grind, but life was very serious for people back then and they knew what the stakes were, right? They didn't expect to have, you know, those top levels of the hierarchy of needs that I've spoken about before. They didn't expect to have the self-actualization. They didn't expect, you know, so many of those five-star experiences or the five-star levels in their lives. People didn't expect that. Most people were happy to survive, happy to kind of, you know, take care of their responsibilities and their duties. And, you know, that was enough. If you had a husband and he took care of his duties, like that was enough. Nobody was out there, you know, complaining about not having date night or complaining that he's put on weight or that she's put on weight or anything like that. It was like, you know, is he doing his duty? Great. Uh, you know, are my kids okay? Are my kids safe? Are my kids, you know, being looked after? You know, can they thrive in this environment? Yes, okay. I'm, I'm good, right? Anyway, I digress. Managing expectations is a really, really important part of just avoiding the disappointment that comes inevitably when you put a whole load of expectations on another human being. Because really, the gap between your expectations and reality is the space where frustration lies. And you can look at that in your own life. Anytime you have an expectation, you know, and the reality doesn't live up to that expectation, there's a, there's, there's a void there, right? There's a space of frustration and disappointment and resentment. I think what I'm trying to say is if we can lower the expectation, manage it, make it more realistic, hopefully the reality will more, you know, kind of match it a bit closer. And so the space for frustration and disappointment and resentment is smaller. But if you go in with a huge, super high expectation, chances are the reality is not gonna meet that because it's just not life. Life is ups and downs, it's challenges, it's triumphs, you know, it's failures and victories. And a lot of the time life is just not as glamorous as we see on social media. So the first way that I believe we can manage the divorce rate is to manage our expectations. 
So that's the first thing, okay? Second is to check your intentions. We know as Muslims, right? The verily actions are by intention. And within a relationship, within a marriage, it can be very easy to lose sight of the fact that we're in this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're in this for Jannah. You know, this person who's come into my life, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in my life, is amana. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question me about how I behaved with them. As you can tell, all of this advice applies just as much to men as it does to women, to husbands and to wives. You know, if we're going into our marriages if for selfish reasons, um, to get something, to extract something from the other person, whatever that something is, we need to check our intentions. You know, if we are only good to that person when they're good to us, if we only speak nicely to them when they speak nicely to us, if, if when they disrespect us, we disrespect them right back. When they withhold, we withhold too. We are heading to divorce because nobody can, can exist happily and be content in a situation where the two of you are rivals, where you're not team players. Right, so one of the ways that we can manage the, the, the ups and downs of relationships and the way that we show up in those relationships is to check our intentions and keep reminding ourselves of the big picture. The goal for this marriage is to complete half your deen and help you on your road to Jannah. How do you need to show up in order for that to be the case for you? Again, questions for you to answer, inshallah. Number three, this is tied to the second one. But number three, the third way that I have here to mind, you know, to, 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 uh, to, avoid, to reduce the divorce rate is to mind your business. What do I mean by that? Look at yourself. How are you showing up? Are you taking care of your duties? Are you taking care of your responsibilities? Are you fulfilling the rights of the other? Because remember, we will not be questioned about the rights that others owed us, right? We're not going to be questioned if we don't receive those rights. They are going to be questioned. But what we will be questioned about is our responsibilities. What were we supposed to be doing? What were we supposed to be bringing to the table, bringing to the relationship? What did Allah tell us is our role within that relationship? And are we performing it with ihsan? Again, with the intention to please Allah. Minding your business means that you look at yourself first, you rectify yourself first, and you don't spend the majority of your time nitpicking your spouse. He's not doing this, she's not doing that. He never does this, she always does that. Those types of, you know, those tensions, they produce cracks in the relationship, cracks in the marriage. And what happens is that when we are we have a habit of focusing on what our partner is doing wrong and what they are not doing, those things become the truth of their situation. That becomes the story, okay? So regardless of what other things that they're doing right, regardless of the things that they are actually doing, you will no longer see them because you're so focused on what they're not doing or what they're doing wrong. So again, I would like to invite every one of you to just like literally lower your gaze from your partner's faults, yeah? And focus on yourself, mind your business. Another part of minding your own business is to not look at other couples. Don't compare your husband to someone else's husband. Don't compare your wife to someone else's wife. And especially not comparing them to people you see on social media or in the movies, because that's not reality. And if every one of us, if you imagine every one of us just minding our own business and making sure that, hey, at the end of the day, I'm doing my bit. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm showing up the way I need to show up for this marriage. That already, inshallah, will allow you to have confidence in yourself that you at least are doing your part and also to give your partner grace, to give your spouse grace, to have rahmah with them. Right? Because at the end of the day, subhanAllah, we are all flawed human beings. And that's the truth. We're all flawed human beings. We all have failings. We all fall. We make mistakes. We have character flaws. We have personality issues. Every one of us. So it's not for any one of us to put ourselves on a pedestal and say, well, look at me. I'm doing this and that. And like, what is he doing? And what is she doing? 
Because every one of us, you know, we, as I've said, you know, before, we are fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us somebody who's prepared to put up with us. Because, you know, most of us, you know, we're humans at the end of the day. Human beings can be a bit troublesome. So that was the one, two, three, third way. The fourth way that we can potentially reduce the divorce rate is to take divorce off the table. Especially once children come into, into, into the mix. Yani, if you don't have children, do what you like. <laughs> Allahu alam. But do, what, do, you know, do what's right for you. But please, please, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with children, just take divorce off the table. It shouldn't be something that you go to whenever there's a problem, whenever there's a challenge, whenever there's a setback. Okay, then divorce me then. Okay, I'll just divorce you then. Or if you don't do such and such, I'm going to divorce you. Or if you don't do such and such, I'm leaving you. See, that type of talk, it normalizes the idea of divorce. It normalizes the idea that, you know, we're here temporarily. And if, you know, if you stop doing this or if it stops feeling good, you know, I'm out. And especially when you have children, you cannot afford to have that mindset. Your mindset has to be one of, I'm in this for the long haul, for the sake of Allah. I caveat, if you can no longer worship Allah and you cannot maintain your emotional and mental and physical health and safety within that relationship then hey that is another story we're not talking about those relationships we're talking about relationships which have the normal levels of ups and downs and challenges okay so take divorce off the table stop making it a threat stop making it a talking point even in your own head and i'm going to talk about that in a minute okay the next way that we can inshallah reduce this divorce rate is by focusing on the good and being grateful and this is for everybody involved. Focus on the good that your husband brings to your life and be grateful. Focus on the good that your wife brings to the table and be grateful. Because guys, the more you focus on the good and literally let go of what we were saying before, you know, the failures, the failings, the weaknesses, etc. The less you focus on them and the more you focus on the good, the good expands, the good becomes more, the good increases. And the story that you tell in your head is, is a positive story. It's, it's that, you know, my wife tries so hard. My husband would do anything for me. My husband works so hard to look after our family. My wife is so dedicated to the raising of our children. My husband knows how to give me a hug at the end of the day. My wife is the only person who knows how to make me a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, the way I like it. Whatever the case may be. Focus on the good and amplify that. Be grateful for it. Show appreciation for it. And keep pouring into that. Because guys, you know what? One of the things that I've noticed, you know, with, with us nowadays, now that we're kind of fighting against the stigma of divorce and everything, and, we, you know, we're kind of almost pushing for divorce to become more normalized and it to have no stigma is that we start to tell ourselves a negative story about our marriages. And we, because we focus on the negative and we focus on what's not working, all of a sudden in our head, the marriage is, is, is a disaster. He's terrible, we're not meant to be together, etc. For some people, if they would shift their focus from the negative to only focusing on and amplifying and being grateful for the positives, they wouldn't even be thinking of divorce. They would be grateful that Allah, alhamdulillah, my husband, oh, alhamdulillah, my wife. You know what I'm saying? And I'm speaking, sisters, I'm speaking directly to you. Because we, I think, tend to be the ones who kind of have this kind of comparison issue. Whether it's comparing our husband with an ideal in our head, or someone else's husband, or something that we've seen online, or whatever the case may be. And there's a hadith about, you know, the women being ungrateful for their husbands, ungrateful to their husbands, right? So uh, in this case, sisters, I want to mention you specifically and just remind us to focus on the good of our husbands because this is kind of ties into the next thing, you know, which is stop fantasizing about being divorced. Stop fantasizing about being single. And I'm saying this because I know when you're in the trenches, and you guys are going through a hard time, it can seem like the easiest thing in the world to just say, you know what, if I just didn't have to deal with this person, life would be so much better. 
And it could, be, it could be that he is very difficult, whether he's argumentative or he's disrespectful or he's always late, whatever the case may be, he's not been working for how long, whatever the case may be. You may start to feel like, you know what, I would be better off without this person. If I was single, I could meet someone, someone better than him, someone who appreciates me, someone who loves me, someone who you know, can take care of his responsibilities properly, whatever the weakness in your husband, right? You start to fantasize about the other person who could be that person. Maybe that's my person and not him. If I didn't have to deal with him, that would be one less person to feed in the house, one less person complaining. I could raise the kids the way I want to. I wouldn't have to you know, like battle with him about you know, different issues with regards to the children. I wouldn't have to deal with his mom anymore. You see what I'm saying? It's very easy to fall into this trap. And I'm gonna go so far as to say it is a trap of shaitan. Shaitan beautifies for those of you who have these thoughts, shaitan is beautifying the breaking up of your home. He is beautifying the breaking up of your family. And trust me when I say, if you do get your wish and you end up out there on the other side of a divorce, that is when shaitan will abandon you with your fantasies. And you'll realize that most of what you were expecting or thinking or hoping is not out there. It's not there. A man who loves your kids more than their dad, it's not usually there. A man who's gonna be more financially responsible than the father of your children, eh, not normally there. And if they're out there, they're hard to find. So stop fantasizing about being divorced. Stop fantasizing about finding someone else. Stop fantasizing about raising your children alone because it's less trouble. All you will be doing is exchanging one set of troubles for another set of troubles. You will have to deal with troubles either way. This is life. However, the difference is while you are dealing with troubles now and will be dealing with troubles afterwards, the difference is that if you break the family and you go on out there with your children, your children are going to suffer the consequences of that. And again, this doesn't apply for you if you're in a relationship which is already toxic and out of control and the children are suffering. It doesn't apply to that. And I address this in another video and I'm going to link it below so you can see what I was saying about toxic relationships and making sure that we're not making up a story about our marriage being bad for our children when it's not the case. So um, the point is you exchange these troubles within the family home, keeping the family unit together for kicking the father out, becoming estranged from his family, having to fight him to get money every week or every month, right? Uh, visitation issues, uh, how you will feel being a single parent, how you will feel when the children miss their dad, how you will feel when you realize that actually I can't do this on my own and I need someone and you have to go on the uh, marriage apps how you will feel how, when you go on that difficult journey of actually finding somebody else who will take you on with your kids, how you will feel when he remarries and moves on with his life. Shaitan doesn't want you to think about that. Shaitan wants you thinking about freedom, about being free at last, being able to breathe. And yeah, you may feel that for a short while afterwards. Your kids won't. Your husband or ex-husband won't. Your family probably won't, and his family probably won't, and you eventually will not either, because you've just exchanged it for another set of problems. So this is a really major part of what I wanted to say, you know, in this, in this, uh, in this whole thing. So the next way that we can reduce the divorce rate is to let go of the fairy tale. This ties into managing expectations. But letting go of the idea that it's supposed to be this happily ever after, that there isn't supposed to be any struggle, that it's supposed to be easy. You know, you hear people saying things like, if it's right, it's right. You know, if, he was, if we were right for each other, it wouldn't be so hard. Have you ever heard people saying stuff like that? It's rubbish. Don't listen to them. The Prophet wasallam had issues with his wives to the point where he abandoned them for periods of time where they had disputes, where he wasn't happy with them, where they were not happy with him, where they had ruckus in between them. This is this human nature. 
Human beings are flawed. Therefore, any relationship that they have, they are going to be challenges. This is one individual with their own way of seeing the world, their own character, their own personality, joining with another person who has all of the same of their own, trying to get onto the same page, trying to come to an understanding and trying to move forward together. Of course, there's going to be challenges. And not only that, this is an act of ibadah. This is a way to, to earn Jannah. Do you think Jannah will be earned for cheap? Do you think earning Jannah will be easy? Do you think marriage was supposed to be this heaven on earth? La. Marriage is part of the trials of this life, even though there's such wonder, just like the salah and the fasting and everything else that we do, hajj, for example. Hajj is hard. Waking up for fajr is hard. Fasting is hard. But as Muslims, we know why we do those hard things for the sake of Allah. We know why. Because of the reward, because of the payoff. Marriage is no different. So let go of these fairy tales. They are nonsense. They are not real. Nobody gets to live a fairy tale. Nobody, even if they say it's like a fairy tale, they're lying. It's because they're focused on the fairy tale aspects of their life and they've neglected to tell you about the times when they weren't talking, the times when they couldn't stand the other person, the times when they almost broke up. They don't talk about that stuff. And this is the case for anybody who's been together for any length of time. So please, let go of the fairy tales and start getting real and engaging with this, this work that you have ahead of you. Right, what else have I got? So, what, so far, we've talked about managing expectations, we've talked about checking your intentions, we've talked about minding your business, we've talked about taking divorce off the table, we've talked about um, stopping fantasizing about being single, we've talked about letting go of the fairy tale. The next thing I want to say is keep the company of good wives and good husbands. Listening to people who are in unhappy marriages isn't helpful for you. Listening to people who've been divorced and are upset and bitter and angry, that doesn't help you. Having tons of friends who are single or who are divorced and are not, you know, like are not happy, you know, I'm not saying this to make anybody feel bad, but their perspective is going to be different to yours and is not helpful to you. Keep the company of and listen to good wives and good husbands, people who have healthy relationships. Try to cultivate relationships with them so that they can support you on your journey, so that they can help you, okay? So we have many videos from the Secrets of Successful Wives conference where we had, mashallah, wives who've been married for 10, 15, 20 years who are giving advice. Follow all those sisters and learn from them. I'll put the link in the description, inshallah. But this is a really important part because if all your friends are single, whether you're a man or a woman, the kind of vibes that you're going to get from them, the kind of advice you're going to get from them, it's not helpful. So find healthy relationships that you can, um, that you can not necessarily model, but so you can see what's possible. Okay? And then I think the last thing I want to say, and I don't know whether this is 10 things or not, <laughs> but communication and compromise. This is the way that two human beings who are from different worlds, have different personalities, different characteristics, this is how they can get onto the same page and can walk the same road relatively peacefully. Communication and compromise. And this is for the man and for the woman, for the husband and the wife to work together to communicate your needs, to communicate your wants, to communicate when you have issues and, you know, to compromise. It's not my way or the highway. It's not who's going to win, him or me, her or me. It's what will allow us to win as a team. What is the win for the team? Not what's mine or what's your win. What's the win for the team? Super important for us to have that mindset that we're in this together. When the couple start to talk about my this and his that and you know her this and her that, that's when people start to see themselves as individual entities and that's when sometimes separation or divorce is in the back of their mind because they're now starting to make a boundary to say, I need to look after myself. And sometimes in relationships that are super toxic or broken down completely, it, it, it inevitably happens. But if your relationship is not at that stage, then make sure you don't allow that type of thinking to come into your marriage. 
And the last thing I want to say is remember the end goal. It's returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being able to answer for your deeds. You've been given amana, what did you do with them? You were given responsibilities, what did you do with them? To be able to earn Allah's pleasure through this marriage, to earn Jannah through this marriage, and to leave a legacy for your children. Teach them the ways. And if you don't know the ways, learn them. And that's the wonderful thing about human beings is that Allah Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the ability to grow and learn and evolve. And there are too many examples of marriages that seem utterly broken. And even when one person made a change, it turned the whole thing around. Much less if the two people came together and said, you know what, we need help. Marriage counseling is a thing. It's a good thing. Don't sit with your problems and allow them to fester. You know, make dua. Seek the advice of those who are knowledgeable and can help you, those who are more experienced. Don't give up. That's the bottom line. If you've got something good, if you've got something that you that is worth fighting for, fight for it. Don't give up. And that's all I want to say. If you've benefited from this content, like the video, share it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And any good in this conversation is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything wrong that I've said is from myself and the shaitan. I'll see you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.